Hello, welcome to this audio stream which is running alongside the May month of repentance. This is audio 24 and lasts just under 10 minutes. Hello, Rev Jim here and I hope you were encouraged yesterday by the teaching on the power of the Holy Spirit in repentance. We're going to start looking in the next two or three days at how that power can work in repentance or what it needs to do. Let, I'm using John 16 verse 8. Uh, to start with when he comes the holy spirit he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment i'd like to pick up straight away on the words on those words from the niv prove the world is wrong the niv tends to flatten all emotion and soften it this word is better translated in the greek to call to account to show one's fault to demand an explanation that's from the Strong's Concordance, which is a very uh, powerful and well-accepted concordance of the New Testament. The AV translates better here, I think. It, it reads there, he will convict the world of sin. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, because repentance has to move forward on the conviction of sin. It doesn't move forward on all the good things God's going to give us. It addresses directly the need of the human spirit for forgiveness. So let's just get our teaching straight on this because teaching on sin and conviction is rare in the church today. Let's look at Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's the sin. All have missed the mark. From, um, from the Garden of Eden onwards, all of us have sinned. Our nature is to sin. As we looked at Mark 7, out of the heart come all those evil things. Uh, our nature is to sin against the Lord. And we need to be convicted of this if we're going to move forward in repentance as individuals, churches and the world. Here, we bump into a really big issue, probably the biggest issue in repentance. And it's this. Unbelievers are often easily convicted of sin, but Christians aren't. What happens in the minds of most Christians when I call for repentance is this. They, they say, absolutely right, uh, for them. It's the Pharisee from Luke 18. God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. God's people find it hard to believe that they are sinners in the sight of God. Sometimes I get told, oh, well, this is rubbish, the cross has done it all. That kind of stupid theological statement which has no substance at all in, in our lives. If the cross had done it all, why are four of the seven churches uh, in Revelation 2 and 3 called on to repent? And they were post-cross, post-cross, post-resurrection, post-Christian churches. It's rubbish when people say that the cross has done it all. We are still sinning, even as Christians, and we still need to repent, or the flow of God's work in our lives is interrupted and even broken. I think we've made that point well enough. Conviction is all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And secondly, um, God have mercy on me, a sinner. That's from the Luke 18. That's the tax collector. Uh, conviction of sin, which comes from Romans 3.23, needs to move on to, confect, to, to confession, as we see in Luke 18. All men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have to be convinced of that, both unbelievers and believers. One great revival preacher said, the hardest hearts he ever encountered when preaching about sin were the hearts of God's people. I think we know why. I think the Pharisee said it all. We have to be convicted of our sin because our sin is holding back repentance. And then we have to move on from conviction to confession. We have to say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. We have to accept our sinfulness into our lives and confess it. Apostle Paul taught us that if we confess with our lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, we have both to have the inner conviction and the audible confession if we're going to move on in repentance. So where does the Holy Spirit come into this? The Holy Spirit in Thyatira did this. Uh, this is what the Lord says in Revelation 2. 
then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds and will pay each one of you according to your deeds. The Holy Spirit's job in repentance is to search out our true nature and to show us our sinfulness and where we need to repent. Now, before you get discouraged, let me stress, I think this is a tremendously positive thing. When we, we are seeking repentance for ourselves or trying to encourage others or our church or our nation into repentance, and we speak about what is needed, often we'll be rejected. It's almost second nature. But remember, once we start to speak, the Holy Spirit starts to search the heart. And those who are listening to us are having their hearts searched by the Holy Spirit. I hope you understand what I'm saying. We, those that are unrepentant, are being searched by the Holy Spirit and, having, and are shown their unrepentant hearts. Even though we can't see it, even though we, we feel we failed it, even though we feel it's impossible, even though we feel we should give up, we don't see the other side. We don't see the Spirit searching the heart of, of, of myself. We don't see him searching the heart of those we're speaking to. We don't see him searching the church, searching the pastor, searching the leaders. We don't see him searching the nation, but he is that is his job, to convict the world. And that's everybody in it. That I, I come back again, I've come back so many times to Revelation 2.23 in my, in my life. I am he who searches the hearts and minds and will repay each of you according to your deeds. So if your, your deed is to repent, the Lord will pay you with rich blessing beyond your wildest dreams. If your deed is not to repent, the way ahead looks extremely troubled and dark and you're heading for a very bad time. If you're not a believer, you're heading for a Christless eternity. And if you are a believer, you're heading for a very bad time at the examination of your life after the judgment of the great white throne. I am he who searches the hearts and minds. Mitzpah and the lost son make it very clear what has to happen, uh, but they don't show us what's happening on the inside. On the inside of repentance, if I could put it that way, on the inside of repentance, the Holy Spirit is searching the hearts and minds of those who are listening or who are watching. And why does he do this? Because that's what he said he would do. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin, or as the AV translates much more accurately, he will convict the world of sin. And once the conviction begins in the life of any person, church or nation, uh, beloved listeners, it's out of our hands. The Holy Spirit convicts. The Holy Spirit will lead to confession. The Holy Spirit will lead to repentance. That's his job. And he's very good at it. I hope we're encouraged. We're not on our own, very much not on our own. We have an ally who is working powerfully with us to convict the world of sin and that includes us and our churches. I hope that strengthens our repentance together. Now let's pray. Search me O God and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139 23. Holy Spirit begin your convicting work in me. And then this from 2 Samuel 12, 13. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Holy Spirit, convict all, especially at the highest levels of church and nation. Thanks for listening. See you tomorrow.